If you've been following along the last six to seven weeks, we have been doing a series of assembly videos all around our new floral collection, and I'm going to show them real quick. So we came out with six new floral designs. I can kind of see them. There's a little bit of a glare um, from Olivia Rose and Lisa Jones, and they are beautiful, lifelike florals, which we're going to go into way more detail about, to align with our crepe paper release. So if you're familiar, our crepe paper came out um, last month, I believe, or the month before, fairly recently, and we came out with three different colorways. I'm trying to make sure you can see all the beautiful colors. Much um, brighter tones, especially for the summer, and there's some really nice pastels in here, so perfect for spring. Um, but when you're making with crepe paper, the beauty of crepe paper is how realistic you can get those florals. And so today, while we've had all of these step-by-step -step tutorials on how you put the flowers together, and you can go back and reference those on our Facebooks, um, and our Facebook, our Instagram, and YouTube, you'll be able to see where Jess and I um, have gone through and shown you how to put together each set of the flowers. Today I wanted to focus on how you can actually make them more realistic looking by using different types of shading techniques. Now I am basing most of my techniques around using distress inks with the cray paper, but what I've also done is I've incorporated some of our new Sizzix effects range so that you can see how you can blend making essentials with um, wet acrylics, or not wet acrylics, but creamy acrylics, but I've got them a little bit wet. We're using an acrylic wash. And I'm going to show you how to use our markers and how to use just distress inks by themselves to create some really pretty tonal patterns. So I'm going to walk you through the ranuncula and the fringe tulip today and three different techniques that I've incorporated to create some more realistic shading. There is many ways that you can use crepe paper flowers to make them more realistic, and we will have more content coming to you on that in the near future. But today, we're going to focus on how to make your florals a little bit more lifelike with distress inks. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut a bunch of pieces to make one of our ranunculas. I've already shaded a few of them, and I've even started to sculpt a couple. Um, I wanted to show you what it would look like once you started putting the ranuncula together. The full-size ranuncula, uh, when you put it together, looks something similar to this. The more layers you cut, the tighter you can make the bud, or the more open you can make it. Ranunculas, obviously, when they are in their initial flower form are very tight and then when they open, they open into these gorgeous blooms. So I've used this kind of pale orange pink color from the vintage crepe paper pack and what I've done is I've gone through and just added shading to them using this Distress um, ink called Dried Marigold and what it does is it just allows you, as you can see, to add that different tonal shape and color. So there's a lot of flowers out there where they just have um, brighter edges or they might have a color come from the center and up to the top and then the top is a lighter color. I just wanted to create something that had a lot of different color variations. So I'm going to show you quickly how I put the color on. Um, I'm using our multi-tool. You can use any blending tool that you might have handy. You can even um, use, you can even wet this with a um, like a water spritzer and then use it as a watercolor. You will want to be very light with the water on the crepe paper because it will distort the paper. However, in my testing, I found that it gave it kind of a cool, unique waving effect, which made the petal appear more realistic. It gave it a really cool ruffled edge, which I'll show you on the French tulip in just a minute um, when I applied water to that. So as you can tell, I'm just going in and I'm slightly, I'm building up color and you're going to apply color to both sides. Now most flowers don't have a uniform look to them when you're, um, you're adding shading onto them. They kind of are a little bit wild so they don't have to be perfect which is awesome. We want this to feel as real as possible and in nature flowers are very unique. So then I just drag that color down just a little bit so that it kind of blends in all together. But that's really all I did for all of these pieces right here is I just added a little bit of that dried marigold to all of them, did them in different 
um, saturations. So some are a little bit darker than others, some are a little bit lighter. But then what I did is I went in and I started to sculpt them. Now for the ranuncula, you want to create like a really cupped, domed shape. So I've already started to do that on a vast majority of the flower petals. So I'm just going to finish this up and then I'm going to use my hot glue and start to piece it together so you can see what that looks like once you finally put all the blended pieces together. And I'm going to compare it to the other one I just showed you where we didn't add any shading to it so that you can see what it looks like. So with these, you can also go back in and use the fold and form tool and really get like a cupped edge if you want it to be more tight on the inside. You can actually take this and cup that inner lid so that when it folds in, it creates a tighter bed. If you don't want that, you don't have to do that. But the fold and form tool is great for getting those natural um, ruffled effects on the edges or getting the perfect sculpt for your petal, especially with the rose. The garden rose is perfect for that. So what I've done is I've already started the center. I cut a bunch of these smaller ones and I've just layered them up and I'm just going to keep going around with my hot glue and adding these on until I get that center the way I want it. You don't need a lot of hot glue when you're putting these together. In fact, I usually just put a little bit on either side and then I've decided not to do this one on um, on wire because you don't always have to put these crepe paper flowers together on wire. Um, I'm, I've loved the idea of taking a floral and adding it onto a wreath or um, using it to decorate your gifts on top and um, just using it for other things other than a bouquet. So you can use them for garlands. Um, We've, I've seen some really cool 3D art recently that I am curious to start to test out myself. So crepe paper does have more purposes than just creating bouquets. You can actually create a lot of other things with crepe paper. Um, but I just want to show you how to create realistic florals today. So you'll see I'm not going to do like this uniform pattern around. I'm kind of just placing them here and there, trying to create more of an organic shape. Um, so I'm not trying to be perfect by any means, but I am trying to be similar in how I place it. So that one's a little bit tighter than I would have wanted. I should have gone up a little bit higher. So I'm gonna do another one with that and try to place it a little bit higher. So then I start to get a more open shape and you can always like once you've put them on you can always peel it away a little bit and create something that feels a little bit more natural the center should be a little bit tighter than the rest so the, the rest of them I will probably aim to keep them a little bit more open all in the placement. That's the nice thing with crepe paper is you can um, you can really play with the, the shape. So now I'm going to move on to the next size and on these ones I'm not going to put it on the side so much as I'm going to put it on the bottom and I just did that one upside down but that's okay. I put the color I wanted at the bottom but I can always go back in and add the shading on there. So note to self, pay attention to which way you're gluing them because you could do what I just did and put the, the hot glue on the wrong end. So I want this to be a little bit more open so I'm kind of keeping these a little bit looser. You can obviously make it as tight as you want that bud to be. Um, I like having flowers that are, in, especially if you are creating a bouquet, I like having flowers in the various 
states of opening or blooming, I guess. So with this one, it's not gonna curve in as much as this one would. You can see I'm already trying to make it a little bit different. Um, what you can do is at the top is pull these apart to get more of like a rippled effect. Because there are different types of ranunculus out, ranunculus out there. There's the butterfly ranuncula, which is absolutely stunning. And it is a little bit more of a wild ranuncula. But as you can see, as you start to place this around, then you are able can have it go higher up and have it cup in more. So I'm just going to keep going around and around. Okay, I need to get another glue stick. So I'm just going to continue to kind of glue these on quickly because I want to show you the other ones that different things you can do with them. What's nice is you can see as I'm doing this that it's not creating like this perfect bottom and that's okay because with these flowers what you would do is cut out the greenery that goes along the bottom or the leaves and then you'd use that to strategically place it and cover up anywhere you have overlapping petals that might not feel um, natural. And you can also just keep applying the petals where you see things that don't feel natural and just try to make it feel as normal as possible. Like no quick way to I wish you could apply adhesive and on all of them and then just pick it up and put them on and it would stick in place to make putting flowers together a lot easier <laughs> so now I'm going to move on to the larger the larger shading or the larger petal shape I should say which has a bigger shading area but you can you can see as I'm doing this that it really just is more dark towards the top, which is what I wanted. But you could apply different, um, you could, I've seen some flowers out there where they have like multiple colors on them. They're absolutely stunning. Um, you could do a really pretty watercolor with distress inks or any type of ink for that matter, um, as long as it's water-based. I actually do a lot of watercolor painting with water-based inks. I just find the pigments really nice and saturated. You can see I'm not, there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm placing these. I'm just going with my gut. <laughs> and I'm trying to make it. I am trying to make a ranuncula that's very full and open. I'm not trying to do a closed one today. But you could also, what would be cool is you could also skip. Um, you could skip certain petals and not do like a very dark coloring. And then that would create even more kind of contrast between different petals. So this one, obviously, I did most of the inking at the top, so it's mostly going to be a darker color until you turn it to the side and you can see, oh, it's actually just the top. But if you wanted, you could just add it to the rim, and I'm going to show how I did that on another one in just a second.
The trick with all of these is to just cut a ton of petals because whether you use them all or not is not a big deal. I'd rather have more and not use all of them than have, not have enough and have to start that process over of cutting and inking. So my recommendation is always just cut a bunch and then just play with it as you go. So these I didn't really shape all that much, but what I could do is go back in, pull them apart, create a little bit of a ripple effect. Just makes it feel like it has some more natural, organic shape to it. Especially because butterfly ranunculus are definitely a little bit more ruffled. I love flowers so much. I love going to the the flower market to see all the different colors in person that you can do. So there is, I'm going to cup it a little bit so it closes a little bit more, but there is your shaded ranuncula and as you can see same kind of thing but I created more of an organic feel to it. So ranunculas can be these like perfectly sculpted um, shapes or you can create something that's a little bit more your style. I love being able to creatively change things as you wish. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the next um, the next kind of way that I use color. And I'm using the fringe tulip for this. And I'm going to show you what I did. So, as you can see, I've still got distress inks here. I've got my petals already cut. And I've already done the coloring on this. I um, wanted to show you quickly how I did the, the color. Um, so just to give you reference, this paper that I have the, is this color. Um, I've used a really pale yellow, also from the vintage set. And then I have, initially, I have gone in with a watercolor wash using our Mango Tango acrylic paint. So this is from the Sizzix FX range. And it comes in, I believe these are 60 milliliter tubes. And what I did is I just put a small dab of the acrylic paint on a craft mat, added a bit, spritz of water here and there, and then took a paintbrush. And you want to use, you don't want to oversaturate the paper. So I ran it through the paint, dipped it off to the side, and then I ran it up and down on both sides to get, as you can see, this is one where I've added the inks on top. This, I haven't added the inks yet. So I just did my own kind of brushing to create a more autumnal kind of look. And then once it dried, I went back through with Distress Inks to create different shades. So you can see it's a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter right here. And then I've added some more of the, fur, um, the fossilized amber right here. And then I've added a little bit of rusty hinge here and there to create a little bit of a burnt look. So I've already added the fossilized amber onto this one. And I wanted to show you quickly what I did um, is I just went through and added that color in different places. just to give it a really unique effect. Now what you could do too is if you just want it on the edges is I like to roll them up and then just attack the paper like that. <laughs> so you can obviously get it as dark or light as you want. Um, what I like about the Cray Paper Flowers is you can change them out seasonally to different colors. Um, so this one uh, we've done in a more traditional kind of pale purple, not pale, that's a very dark purple <laughs> um, color. This is also from the vintage crepe paper pack. And as you can tell, it is obviously much different in tone than these yellow ones, but you can create these realistic florals um, that are superb. So now that I've got those put together, I'm going to add them onto um, the centerpiece for this. So I've got some floral wire here that I'm going to quickly glue into the center. And I've taken the centerpiece and cut this from the crepe paper um, and used the center for this particular French tulip set. 
Okay, and then with this one, um, you just are going to create a wide bottom. And then they kind of, it's only three pieces to create this flower, which is unreal, I love it. It's one of the easier ones to make if you're wanting to make a lot. Um, obviously the ranuncula has a lot of pieces to it. <laughs> and if you wanna make those in a bouquet, it's gonna take you a little bit longer than this French tulip, which only requires three pieces. So you just create that domed effect to go around the bottom portion of where the bead is. And then I'm just over placing these overlapping. You'll notice I just put glue at the bottom because what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this away and shape it a little bit more. But very simple to put together. And as you can see, because I was very, um, not very, I didn't plan where I was putting my color, that's actually created a really beautiful natural colorway that is, feels like something you would see out in nature. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to peel these kind of edges apart here and there. And what that does is it creates a ripple effect and just allows it to have more room to move around. Try not to pull too hard like I just did on that one because they will tear. And then you can even take your tool and kind of have those edges curl out in different areas so that it feels a little bit more natural and free flowing. And then I'm going to actually glue this little piece down right here just so that that holds in place. And then you would just go in and add, I don't know if you can really tell very well from this angle. It's, I'll show this one um, when I go back up to my overhead camera because I feel like these really show best when you see them straight on. But as you can see, another really beautiful organic style photo, or not photo, flower. The last one I want to show you is similar flower, but a different way of adding color to them. So I've shown you um, Distress Ink by itself, Distress Ink mixed with our Sizzix FX Creamy Acrylic Paints and how you can create a, an acrylic wash with that. The next one I want to show you is how you can use our permanent pens, which come in a 12 pack. These are alcohol based pens, which are perfect for um, adding shading onto florals because they'll add a nice bleed. So I've pulled out some colors to go along with this, and I'm going to also use. Um, this rusty hinge again. And what I did this time is I took this Mango Tango pen and I used that same yellow and I used the broad tip side and just went around and added my color on. Now, what I actually did with these to create more of a ruffled effect is I first took a paintbrush with a light amount of water on it and I went over the paper where I was going to add my pen. And that, what it did is allowed that ink to kind of saturate into the crepe paper more in a ble and bleed a little bit better. And then what I did after that is I went through um, with the fine tip side using this brown paper, or not brown paper, this brown pen, and I added in dots. Something you would see in like um, a stargazer lily or you know, whatever flower you want yours to have like those kind of natural things. You can also paint those on with the acrylic paints, just taking a paintbrush and a really fine tip paintbrush and you can go in and add this more natural um, kind of spotted effects and different lines that you might find in a flower. So I did the same thing with this. I went back over, I added, I waited for them to dry and then I went back over with the fossilized amber and this rusty hinge just to create more of um, like a burnt orange effect. And I literally just went around the edges of this to blend in 
those colors. Now, I'll show you some others where we the carnation's a great one to use the permanent markers on because carnations at the top have a really strong kind of bleed effect on them. And so the permanent markers are great for that, but I wanted these to feel a little bit more natural, so that's why I blended the distress inks with them because what it does is it blends that those kind of harsher lines um, with the the distress ink so that you have something that feels a little bit less harsh. Some flowers you want that harsh line because that's how they just naturally are, but then I always want mine to feel and move like real flowers. So you can see that that already, I, that already rippled. I didn't pull that. That rippling effect is from the water. Um, as it dried, it created that kind of rippled effect. So if you use a little light amount of water with a paintbrush, you can control where that goes and then be able to have something that's feels and moves like a natural flower petal. So I'm just opening those ones up like I did the other one. And I'll put this together real quick as well so you can see all of those final flowers. And then this one also has a really nice um, Not petal, sorry, leaf. Sorry, I was trying to get that glue and got distracted there for a second. <laughs> so same with the other one. I just sculpted the bottom into a cone shape, and I'm just going to glue those around the beaded. I'm going to do this one just a little bit more open than the other one because the other one was a little bit tighter. We also have our pastels, and I want I haven't tested this out, but I did want to mention that this is something, I know that Pete and Jess have also tested these, and I know it works, um, but I didn't have the time for the video today to show you how the oil pastels work with the crepe paper. Now they do work with the crepe paper, and pan pastels are more of like a chalk, so you can do chalk or pan pastels to also color your flower petals and get a really nice, beautiful hue on things. But you can also use the oil pastels. They are um, really nice and beautiful, and the colors blend well with the crepe paper. You will, I would recommend kind of using like a baby wipe to put them on, or something that's just a little bit, um, a little bit wet, just so that they bleed a little bit easier and blend onto the crepe paper a little bit better. So I'm just going to, glue this one in a few strategic places and then the second flower is done. There we go. Okay, so that's our second um, tulip. So you can see I've got two very different tulips using two of the same colors and then I've also got my ranuncula with the shaded effects on it. So I'm going to show you the carnation real quick and how that looks when you add um, the ink to the edges. So all we've done right here is take that red pen in our permanent, permanent pen pack and run that across the top of the carnation. And that's what's given it that blended edge that you would find on a carnation. So permanent ink pens are great for that. I've also got a rose here um, that Debbie did. And she's just very lightly added the pale pink on there. And you can see it adds like, it looks like a garden rose almost. And she used, used our form and form, uh, fold and form tool to create this really beautiful, like this it looks like an actual rose. And what she did is she folded one side under and one side over on each of the petals. So one side under, one side over, and repeated that all the way around until she got this really beautiful shape. So the fold and form tool is great for getting those more natural um, petal shapes, but then you can use a 
ton of different um, products that we carry, whether it be the Sizzix FX Creamy um, acrylic paints or the permanent pens or the oil pastels or even just your um, different varieties of distress ink. A little bit of water goes a long way in creating some really natural textures, but I would not douse your paper in it. Definitely not worth it. It will ruin your paper. You just want to apply it with a paintbrush. That's what keeps it a little bit less saturated. Okay, well that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks and different techniques that you can use to create your realistic florals today at home. Um, you can use the permanent pens on the fringe tulip as well to just add a little bit of color on the outside. Um, this is kind of what that one looks like that I did with the, the pens. And then this is the one that I did with our paints. So you can see you get a really nice natural effect um, and I hope you have enjoyed because I enjoyed making them. If you have any questions about any of the products I've used today, please drop us a comment and I will be sure to work with our social team to get those answered. Um, if you have any questions about the products we're using, same thing. Um, we will put, we will link any of the flowers you might be interested in that I talked about today. Until then, I hope you have fun and get making on those crepe paper flowers. I would love to see what you've made with them. Make sure to hashtag us at my making story or tag us on our Instagram account with Sizzix. And we would love to see and share what you are making at home. I hope you all are well. Take care and I will talk to you again soon.